What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm Chris, this is 4K Motoring, and today we're gonna talk about our recent trip from Raleigh, North Carolina, all the way to Austin, Texas for the race at Circuit of the Americas, the MotoGP race. This is the third year in a row we've done it. It was a pretty exciting time with some pretty unexpected twists. So please take a moment, hit that like button and subscribe to this channel. Consider becoming a member for some exclusive content and we've got a lot to talk about. Okay, so we took our 2022 Ducati Multistrada V4S, same one we've had for the last couple years, down from Raleigh, North Carolina to Austin, Texas. Overall, we put about 3,500 miles on this bike on this trip, and we hit 20,000 miles on this bike in total, which I plan on doing a long-term review of this, a 20,000 mile review of this bike here in the near future. If that's something you guys would be interested in, please let me know in the comments below. We started in Raleigh, North Carolina, and on our way down, I rode with one of my friends who had a slightly older, it was a 2010 Yamaha FJR 1300 that's made this trip several times with us as well. Well, we had a pretty uneventful trip going down. We went from Raleigh, North Carolina down to the Motorcycle Museum in Barber, Alabama. This is the world's biggest vintage motorcycle museum. If you guys have not been, this place was fantastic. I will share a couple pictures here with you guys just so you can kind of see what's involved. I'll leave a link to a video up above from Doodle on a Motorcycle if you guys follow her. She has a pretty good video review of the entire place just so you guys can see it. If you ever have the chance, absolutely go to this museum. Well, on our way down, there was a pretty significant storm cell that was headed towards the museum, towards our route and we were kind of heading the opposite direction as the storm passed us. There was tornadoes, there was floodings. It was pretty bad. So we had to kind of snake our way and watch the radar pretty closely to try and avoid any of the major storm cells. We ended up getting to the motorcycle museum in Barber right around noon. They're usually open on weekdays, I believe from like 10 till six, at least of, as of this time. We got there about noon and we're able to bypass a lot of the storms, at least in that particular cell that were passing us, in the museum, so that worked out quite well. And from there, we rode on towards Austin, Texas. As we were getting towards Austin, we were trying to debate what we wanted to do on the way. We were getting in about a day earlier than we normally would have, just to have a little extra time in the area, and we were debating what to do with that. And at that moment, the FJR that was with us suddenly wouldn't accelerate anymore. So we pulled over, we checked a couple things. We noticed that the clutch really wasn't doing anything. We let the clutch out. There was almost a little bit of force that went forward, but nothing even remotely close to engaging. It had fluid. We went ahead and there was a auto parts store nearby. We got some new fluid and tried flushing it just to make sure that there wasn't anything major in the bike and still got nothing. So with flushing the master cylinder with pulling the slave cylinder off the bike and verifying it was working. When that didn't work, we were kind of out of options. So we ended up getting the bike towed to a Yamaha dealer in Tyler, Texas, which was nearby. And what we found was pretty shocking. So when they opened the bike up, they found the clutch discs had exploded in the bike. Not just worn through, but fully exploded. Now the guy that was riding has only been riding for a couple years and I don't think has experienced a worn clutch before nor does he accelerate super aggressively enough to notice a worn clutch or some of the symptoms. So I don't really know what the condition of the clutch was, but evidently he was able to create enough heat in that clutch to melt the aluminum that held the friction material together in the clutch rings and cause it to fragment and go all over the bike. There's some concerns, they're working on flushing it out to make sure none of those pieces go into the engine and making sure all of them are accounted for before they put the bike back together but ultimately it's gonna take a couple weeks for them to get all the parts they need in to get that bike ready and have it shipped back. If you guys have ever had a big mechanical breakdown far away from home, you know it's kind of stressful. And luckily we were able to get the rental car situated and able to get a shipping company sorted out that wasn't too terribly expensive once the bike is done to get it back here. So although our extra day was kind of wasted, we are still able to get to Circuit of the Americas for the MotoGP races, all the warm up and that sort of thing, Friday morning. And this is the first time we've really been down there early on a Friday. Normally we get there either late Friday or too late after the races that we were just ready for Saturday. It was nice to get down there on Friday and see everything, see all the vendors set up and really get a feel for Ducati Island. 
This is the third year I've been to Circuit of the Americas for the GP race and the second year I've got Ducati Island tickets and overall the Ducati Island experience is well worth it in my opinion. I'll include a little bit of video here from the Ducati Island experience, kind of walking around, seeing the parking situation, seeing all the bikes they have on display, seeing the actual Ducati Island specific area where they have food set up on Sunday, they have a little viewing platform and kind of direct track access, which is pretty cool. And it's super nice to be able to bring your bike directly into the track, especially if you've got luggage that we can carry water bottles or sunscreen or whatever else with you that you're going to need. Without a doubt, I think this was the most exciting racing that I've seen at Circuit of the Americas so far. This year was pretty fantastic. Aprilia, KTM, Gas Gas, and Ducati were all very competitive together. Yamaha and Honda not included. So the racing was actually really good. Maverick Vinales was the two-time winner, the sprint and the main race he won. Marc Marquez was a super exciting to watch on that Ducati. He is going to, I think, be pretty entertaining for the rest of the year if not successful in the typical Marquez way. Oh, no, Mark Marquez has gone down. Listen to the crowd, Mark Marquez. And overall, it was a great experience. The fan lap was great, the track walk, great fan experience. For you, those of you that don't know, Liberty Media has bought the rights to MotoGP. They're the ones that bought the rights to Formula One as well. It's a US-based company. So hopefully that'll be good for the sport. I know there's a lot of differing opinions on that. And hopefully, given their push for extra tracks in the US for Formula One, we'll be seeing something in the future to add to the MotoGP calendar here in the US. I know there's a track being built in Tennessee that's supposed to be on that list, but we'll see. Overall, I had a pretty good time at the track. Got to meet a lot of people that I haven't seen in a while. Got to meet a lot of you guys that were out there. For all you guys I was able to meet out there, thanks for coming up to say hi. It's really nice to meet you guys and hearing what content you're enjoying about the channel. I was able to meet a couple other YouTubers out there and some of the RevZilla guys, which is pretty cool, and some of the Ducati higher-ups. It was a really cool experience overall. And if you haven't been to Austin, Texas, the city is actually pretty cool. It's a pretty big, spread-out city, very rapidly growing, and there is a lot of live music everywhere and a lot of different foods, a lot of different culture. Really cool place to be. The return trip back was... Again, it's about a 1,400 mile trip between Austin and Raleigh. I really debated how much I was going to do. It was really tempting to try and push through and just get the whole 1,400 miles done in one day, which would have been a long day, but honestly, I just wanted to get home at that point. I ended up doing about 1,000 miles, right at 1,000 miles, on the first day going from Austin, Texas, right to it, just past Atlanta, Georgia. At that point, it was nighttime and I was frankly exhausted. So I really felt it would have been unsafe to push forward from that point. Got a little bit of sleep, woke up the next morning and was able to finish out pretty easily getting home. The Multistrada itself was fantastic with a couple minor issues, mostly being my fault. The keyhole on the back of the top case is really easy to use, but it's also really easy to leave the key in and accidentally bump it and completely shatter your key. Now this bike is mostly keyless as far as the ignition and gas cap, which is nice, but to get in the, any of the luggage, you need the key and need to be able to turn it. So that ended up being kind of problematic for the remainder of the trip. I kind of got a workaround situated where it was functional, but not well. Still debating if I'm gonna get a new one or not. I was able to get home and use some plastic weld to basically get that back to where it's supposed to be. And I would say it's 98% fixed at this point. Our, Anarchy Road tires, Michelin Anarchy Road tires, definitely got some flat spotting, as you guys can probably see in the picture, in the video. What I was really focused on was this tire's overall life. I'll have a specific review for this tire coming out soon with what I've learned about it. I was a little bit concerned about its overall life. And what I can tell you so far is, just for metrics, the center of the tire, after right about 4,000 miles on this tire now, is down to 630 seconds of tread left. The tire started brand new at 9.30 seconds. So you guys can do some math and maybe figure out exactly how long this tire is gonna last. Generally 2.30 seconds is the minimum to still be able to afford water and that sort of thing before it's unsafe. So you guys can kind of see the lifespan of this tire based on my riding. What I will tell you, and you guys can kind of see the picture on the screen, 
through the highway riding we were doing, we were doing kind of higher speeds, 85 to 90, sometimes a little bit faster passing people. And the center of the tire got pretty warm and pretty roughed up, which you guys can see in the picture, which I'm sure contributed to the tire wear and the flat spotting that we're seeing. Overall, the grip was pretty good. Like I said, I'll have a specific video on my overall thoughts on this tire coming up soon. Navigation is always a hot topic when talking about the Ducati. This is the third year I've gone and now the third solution I've had for navigation. The first year I used the inbuilt Cigic navigation with my phone in the little phone cubby. That was an epic fail. Second year I used my phone on the ram mount which overall was a pretty decent solution. It's sometimes a little bit hard to see. Sometimes it caused my phone to heat up and not charge for a while which it never went dead. It always made sure it charged before it went dead. And there, there were some issues if I didn't download the map ahead of time with the navigation. If I went to an area that didn't have cell service, sometimes that would cause some issues. This year I ended up with the Garmin Zumo XT and overall I think this is really the solution I was looking for. It is not exactly perfect, but I think it's the best option I've tried so far and really worked well for this trip. Obviously my cardo was a point of concern. I was waiting till I completed this trip to give you guys kind of a report of my third edge unit after it was replaced twice due to battery issues. And at least what I can report at this time was I had a pretty flawless experience with this edge. I really think that the first two I got were just bad. Hopefully those two were just flukes. I've been in contact with Cardo and overall it seems like it's a pretty small percentage of edge units that are having these issues. Mounted to my showing Neotech 2, I've had the Neotech original. I have a couple Neotech 2s between work and personal, and I really like the helmet. I was able to see the Neotech 3 in person, and what I can tell you is that everything looks a little bit more refined than the Neotech 2. I really like that the micro ratcheting chin mechanism is a little bit smaller, so it doesn't kind of rub on you the same way. The ventilation has been improved a little bit, and overall, everything is just a little bit more streamlined and modernized with that new ECE 2206 standard that has the MIPS protection. Pretty cool helmet if you're in the market. So I know that's just kind of an overview, glossing over a couple big things that happened. If you guys have any similar stories of your own or have shared some of these issues, let me know in the comments below. Like I said, there's going to be a few more videos coming out soon in regards to a lot of the things I've talked about. So make sure you're subscribed, make sure you like this video. Thank you guys for watching. And again, thanks for everybody that came out to me at the track, letting me know that you watch the channel. We'll be back with more soon.